Jason Valkeen, welcome to <laughs> Georges Club 14. How are we doing, brother? Always better than I deserve. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me and great to be a part of this community. That's for sure. Thank um, you. I'll, I'll just dive right into it. You know, I, I was a I was a 20 year sales guy to give some of the people that don't know me my background. And um, I left my W2 a couple of years ago. And that was after I joined the Jake and Gino community. So certainly after I joined, something happened, right? I was able to scale. I was able to, um, you know, feel more comfortable doing that. For the first time in my life, I didn't have to go get another job, right? My job was my became my side hustle became my job. So that was a really, you know, monumental uh, time in my life. That's for sure. Um, before that, I had, you know, I had a couple million and just uh, live mostly live in flips. You know, I, I did this, the textbook thing. I went from single family, you know, uh, flips and, uh, rentals. And I went right into, um, I got serious really quick and I went right into a syndication, a 54 unit. Now that's not normally the path for a lot of people, but that was my path. And, um, what can I say? You no one told me I couldn't do it. So that's what I did. <laughs> um, love that. And, uh, you know, I just closed on my, uh, you know, second major multifamily deal so for me like that's why i joined the jake and gino community because i remember having that conversation with you gino at at the event like everyone said oh yeah once you get your first deal your second deal will come right away right well that wasn't my experience for whatever reason it wasn't coming right away like i just there was nothing happening so and it, part of it was i wasn't making it happen but part of it was that i just wasn't surrounded by the right group of people so that, that was very helpful when I joined and, um, you know, it still took me some time and it's, it's not the perfect climate, but we found, you know, I'll explain it when I talk about this deal, but we found the value in the deal. And that's, that's really what, what, like Jake was saying, you got to find the value in these deals these days. You got to find, you got to kiss a lot of frogs to find your prints. So, um, you know, about me, I married 16 years, uh, three kids, three beautiful kids, follower of Christ, man of faith. I try to operate my life and my in my business according to those principles and uh, love golf, love hunting, love painting cars. Um, why multifamily? I think a lot of the people on this call will know that and you guys preach it all the time. I mean, I, I'll just tell you this. My favorite part of multifamily is being able to force the appreciation of a building. I have control over the value of that building. I can fix it up and I can force the value. I can charge more in rent, which then translates to a higher value to the bank for that building. So that's, that's been my favorite part is when you make it a better place to live for somebody, then you get rewarded for that. Where When you're doing single family flips, you make it a better place, but it just depends on what the guy down the street sold his house for. It doesn't depend, depend on what you did. So that's, that's probably my favorite part of multifamily. Can I just jump in real quick, Jason? Somebody, yeah, asked, somebody asked a question in the chat box. Maybe you can ask, answer this question. He says, is it possible for a high income W-2 earner? Is this possible for a non-high income W-2 earner, like high, like a high school teacher salary? I mean, I, I'd have my opinions on that. And when I jumped in, and I'll let you answer as well. When I jumped in, Jake and I, myself, we weren't high income earners. I, I was not making a lot of money. I was living in New York. I was paying a lot of taxes. I had five kids at the time. So I was not saddled with yeah. a tremendous amount of income. What I understood and what I had to learn the hard way was I needed to learn the business. I needed to be able to attract the Jake Senziano into my life. I need to be able to attract a Mike Gelchi into my life, another one of my partners, that I that they had value and I had value. And we always preach multifamily is a team sport. That's why we've created the Jake and Gino community because it's really hard to do by yourself. I tried to do it by myself. It's called Life Before Jake and I failed miserably. <laughs> Life After Jake has been a lot easier for me for a multitude of reasons because I can sit here before we jump on this webinar, I'm bitching and moaning to Jake how hard my day has been and who else, if, I, if, I, if I'm all by myself, it's going to be a challenging life being an entrepreneur. But when you start partnering up with other people and you start bringing value to that person and that person brings value to you, man, business becomes a lot easier. So I don't worry about a person's financial situation. I worry about their financial intelligence. That's more important than how much money you got in the bank. Because you can, if you can understand T12s, if you can understand rent rolls, if you can understand how to create value from that deal, 
you're a person who's in high demand because there's people out there who have money and are looking to place money in a deal like that. So if you can find the value in the deal, manage the deal and want to make that deal work, you have the skills to do that. You'll be able to attract the capital. Jake, what say you, my friend? Now it's, it's, it's a really interesting point, you know, because I think, you know, everybody has a different skill set thing that they can bring. And I think to your point, multifamily is a team sport and, you know, I, you know, for, for myself, look, I was living in a, in a two bedroom apartment. I had a one bedroom apartment before that. And ultimately multifamily was the, the vehicle that was able to allow me to get out of that. And then, you know, there's a funny story. We, we go back to for years later, we tried buying that building and the leasing agent was going, hey, why do you look familiar? I was like, yeah, I lived in two hundred one B. What are you doing here? Uh, you know, I'm trying to buy this. It, it was it was a very bizarre, surreal. experience, <laughs> but it's real, right? And so I, I think it's it, it's all about you know you know we talk about strength finders and and you know where you can add value um, because look it, it does it sometimes it, it takes a village with these things to, to you know pull them through. So getting on a good team or you know Jason you know to to his success had you know you saw just a minute ago had his solo GP so. Everyone has a different path in this, but I think there's a lot of possibilities for sure. I mean, Jason, if you want, if you want to add anything to that real quick before we jump into your deal, because I think it's important to get your perspective as well. Well, really, I mean, the way I've always understood it is you need three things. You need a deal, you need the knowledge and the hustle, and you need the money. So you got to have two of those three things, I really feel like, in order to. So if you don't have money, you need to have a hustle and you need to have the knowledge and the deal, right? And so I really feel like, you don't, it doesn't matter what you, profession you're in. It really matters how you surround yourself with other people, how you join a, a community and how you network. And like, I didn't do these things by myself. I might be a sole GP, but I got a lot of other help. I got bankers and lawyers and relationships. And I got, you know, I've raised money from LP investors. So it's like, you know, you need people. And and on my last, this last deal, you'll see the pain points. Like I didn't, I found out my bandwidth real quickly. I didn't have enough resources and capacity. Mm -hmm. To, to raise the full capital. I didn't, I didn't, my network wasn't deep enough. I had a too tight of a timeline. It was, uh, it was really, really tight for a while. I almost didn't close it. So, um, so yeah, we'll just kind of dive into it, but you can see on the slide here, exactly what Jake's talking about, exactly what Gino's talking about. You know, you need the networking, you need great coaches, you need someone to call, man, just to talk you off a ledge sometimes. Yes. I, I make those calls probably once a week with Jake. The, I, and my ledges are getting a little higher and higher. And like, are we really, are we really going to do these deals? Or yeah, It's amazing. Like some of the things that we do. And it's like, if you're by yourself, it does get scary. It does get lonely. So I, I, I totally, totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. So, you know, you buy right, finance right, manage right. The, the framework that you guys give is solid. Uh, you know, it's for this deal, it was buy right. So the guy was mismanaging it. So it was really, he wanted 7 million, but we, we ended up, I wanted to pay him 5.1 to be honest with you, but we, we settled at 5.6 and, uh, but it really is a six, $7 million property. He just was managing it. So again, that forced appreciation, that bank value, the bank couldn't get there. The value, the broker couldn't get to the value he wanted because he was so mismanaged. His expenses were so high and we saw the value. I saw a value in cutting expenses. And I just, I saw the value also in, the fact that these are still, they were developed as a condo complex. And so we'll go, you know, I'm fast forwarding and jumping the gun a little bit, but your exit strategy, ours is kind of intermingled. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, they're already partialized. We're going to individually list these and sell these as individual condos. They're beautiful. They're right on the river and the city wants it. They need it. They need housing. There's a shortage. And so before I even wrote my LOI, I sat down with the city. I said, Hey, do you want this? You need this. Can I do this? And the answer was a resounding yes on all three counts from the city of Big Rapids. So that's that's why we pursued it and saw the value, the inherent value, you know, in this deal. You buy it $75 a square foot and you sell it 150, you know, it's 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 a pretty good, good day. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> So before you go on, Jason, I, Jake, I'd like you to comment on the buy right because I know I can see a little drool on, your, on the side of your lip right there. Well, you, you know what I'm going to say? These look like true apartment homes. You know it's coming out of my mouth. They, they have yes. garages. I'm sure they have washer dryer hookups. They have a nice yes. little area in the back. Yep. You know, these are the kind of things that we uh, we look for because ultimately your most expensive unit, I said this a million times, is the empty unit. And these you know types of structures, you know, they, they lend themselves to people renewing right they stay it's they garages 
have a stickiness factor like nothing else in the multifamily space. And what do I mean by stickiness? People don't typically even park in them, if we're going to be completely honest. I bet 50% of these garages have cars in them. The rest of them are glorified storage units or man caves. I've seen it all. But the point is it creates more of a home and a home you know, like that creates stickiness and enjoyment for the person living there. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good thing. Uh, and, and look, we love, we love investing in deals that have garages. So and when we talk, when we talk about the buy right criteria, I mean, Jason, I guess followed our, our advice to a T he bought a newer asset in a great market, in a great area. He likes the amenities. He likes the garages. He likes the, the, the asset, the way it was built. And he, he's always thinking about the exit strategy. Now, Scott, there's a couple of questions in the chat box. I don't want to, I don't want to pull everyone away from that. If you could answer those, or I, I mean, like somebody's talking about uh, buying a, a 10% cash on cash on entry or within a year, I'm tasked with finding deals for a good friend and partner. That's awesome. Biggest challenge for me is finding this right deal. Well, I mean, James, uh, you can talk to uh, Jason. Jason was having the challenge and all of a sudden one day it fell in his lap and he wasn't prepared. So, I mean, that that's part of the thing. You're always sourcing deals. You're always out there talking to brokers. You're always out there networking. And then all of a sudden, God makes a mistake. One falls in your lap and you're ready to go. So you're, we always- I, I, I'll comment on that too, you know, sometimes it may not be, you know, on entry, but if you know your comps and you know the market, it, it a lot of times it's possible within 18 months, right? And so I think that's- you know, something that, uh, that you need to realize, because if you know the comps and like, say, say in this market, just for shits and giggles, we know that these should be renting for 1800 a month, but they're being rented for 1400 a month right now. Well, there's going to be some time, you know, on renewals and, and whatnot to be able to get those to what the market rate is. And so that's not going to happen always overnight. And so, you know, sometimes on the entry, uh, that's that can definitely be a challenge, but you know, in you know, twelve to eighteen months, twenty four months, it's very doable. So, and yeah. uh, before you before you continue, Jason, uh, yeah. J uh, George Hart asks about starting out by purchasing a fourplex. George, I'm going to really be honest with you. Jake and I closed on a four unit two months ago. I, I don't care about the size of the deal. <laughs> we did a four unit two months ago. We're doing a sixty three unit and a sixty seven unit. The size of the deal doesn't concern me. It's, I want you to start. I started with a fourplex back in 2002. That was my very first deal. My very first deal with Jake back in 2013 was a 25 unit. The size of the deal doesn't matter. What matters is that you get started. Then when you buy that first deal, you'll figure out how to get the second deal. You may need to use seller financing. You may need to use syndication. You may need to go find a money partner like James is looking for. I think the, the whole bottom line is just start right? No deal is better than a bad deal. Always focus on the good deals, but focus on the deal that you can take down legitimately. Take the deal down. All of a sudden, you're a closer. Brokers are going to realize that you closed the deal. They're going to be coming for you and you have the ammunition to go out to people, friends and family and other people saying, hey, listen, I just closed the deal. You want to hear about it? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And, and you know, this was, this came from a broker across the desk, but it looked, it looked stinky bad, uh, you know, on paper because the guy was mismanaging it and it was so tight and it was student housing and I don't like student housing personally, but at the end of the day, I, I don't, it's not going to be student housing. Really. It's just about the exit strategy for this deal, you know, yes. and, and, and it was built in 2007. You guys all remember what happened in 2007, right? Mm -hmm. so these guys finished developing this thing. They couldn't sell any of them. So the city gave them a special use clause to rent it. It worked out for them for their investor group and they made money. So they just kept kicking the can down the road and, Eventually, they owned it for 17 years. They had to refinance in April of this year. And what did interest rates do? So now they can't refinance and operate it the crappy way they were operating it. So they saw the writing on the wall. They're like, let's get out. Right. So, so I just caught a distressed owner. The asset wasn't distressed, but it was a distressed owner, kind of. And they just had to sell. So I love the student conversion, too. I think it's a, it's a great play. It's one that we've implemented. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for it these days. So that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Look at the investment summary here. You got a purchase price of 5.57 million, capital improvement budget of 1.1, closing costs of 450. So the total capitalization is 7.1 million. And I love the financing terms. These are good terms for right now. You got 30 years of interest only. You got five years fixed. So there's no floating rate debt. 30 We're months, Gino. 30 months. Oh, I say three years. <laughs> We'd be really partying. They might be five years fixed, 30, 30 months interest only. 
24 yeah two and a half years i'm sorry two and a half years of, of i'm getting i'm excited because i think the, I <laughs> the deal is freaking amazing i'm like dude what this guy had to sell and that's what happens when you don't have your exit strategy and your debt lined up that's what ends up happening so jason now has the next five years to be able to work on this business plan not to be not 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 to be rushed and within the next five years when rates go down Jason will be there ready to refinance this deal out. So, or, and, or sell the condos. And um, here's the deal about this. This is, this is a community bank that I have a relationship with. I'm going golfing with this guy on a, on a golfing trip. Like in two months, we're all getting renting a house together. He's done all my, he's done all my rentals, all my flips. He did my, uh, my first multifamily deal. It, it just, he, it just, there's that relationship. Right. And he even said to me, he goes, you know, after 30 months, if you're not done selling them all off, then uh, don't worry, I'll extend the interest only. We'll go back to the board and they'll give you more interest only. I need friends like that. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it's, a, it's an incredible relationship. And guess what? I'm paying for his golf because- well, it's, it's, it's paying for itself. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, uh, and really the cool part about this is as we sell him off individually, he's knocking down the mortgage. Yes. He's not taking the whole chunk of it. He's like, you just keep, he's like, just pay down whatever that chunk of the mortgage is and you can keep the rest of it. So there's yeah, no, no, it's, it's no one of the great banks. things about community banks is just the yeah. flexibility and, and, you know, they're just very reasonable at times. That yeah. So, I mean, it could easily be really difficult to pay my investors back for a long period of time. If the bank was doing major holdbacks, a lot of them yep. will wait till there's 30, 40% till they let you re release the full amount. So, um, so, so the first learning lesson for tonight is always pony up and pay for the golf. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And, and listen, this is a great thing because I spent a little bit of time just talking to Jason over the last couple of weeks about this. But I remember, and I'm going to I'm gonna really open this off with, there's two things you need to be doing in this business. You need to be sourcing deals and you need to be sourcing capital because a lot of people on this call right now are saying, oh my gosh, there's no deals out there. And you're hunting and humming and all of a sudden a motivated seller ends up in your lap and you're like, no, I don't have any money for the deal. That's the problem. Always be trying to raise capital. Always try to feed your investors. Try to keep the conversation going with your investors. Because when you do inevitably find a deal, you have people to be able to raise money from. It was a major mistake for me. Like I thought before this deal, I thought I'll just get the deal and the money will come. That's what I thought. Yes. And it, and it worked out on my first deal. But that was, a I had a very long time and it was a much smaller raise. It's just three times as much raise. This was a third of the time and I had a hostile seller and it just, it would get, it got really hairy really fast. So, so that's my first, you know, uh, mistake or lesson learned is capital raise. F don't just find, don't just try to raise capital, but find capital raisers, partner with guys that that's all they do. That's what, you know, that you can partner with, you can give them part of your GP, right. And they can, they can help you raise that money and you don't have to use all of it, but at least you'll have that, that network to do. Um, know your documents, Gino, you and I talked about this earlier. There was a, there was a time when the lawyer, it was, he, the way he wrote the purchase agreement was very vague. So the seller caught up onto that. And when my hard money was due, I had to buy an extension. Well, the extension was $50,000, but what the seller did was he made all of my money go hard, all 150,000 because the PA, the purchase agreement had vague terms. So now I had to kick and scream and I had to go back and get the lawyers involved so that I wouldn't lose the entire 150,000 out. So, but I still had to bump it up to 75, which was 25,000 more than what we, you know, originally agreed to. And that was, and, and everyone knew that the broker knew that the sellers knew that, but they just went, they went for the jugular whenever that hard money came due. And that was a major mistake on my part, not knowing the PA. So uh, understanding your market, like, I can't stress this enough. Spend time in your market. Spend time where the deal is. Go, you know, spend a couple of days there with your family. Eat at the local restaurants. Go meet with the city. Talk to the city. Talk to people. Like, people know these apartment buildings. People, the local community, they know. They'll, they'll just, they'll know the jobs. They'll know all that stuff. So you can learn a lot just by spending time in there. Calling vendors, different, like snow vendor. On this deal, the they, last year the owner paid forty thousand dollars in snow removal and salt, and I, I can tell you I'm going to do it for about a quarter of that this year. And it was a warm winter in Michigan, like it was just absolutely incredible how much expenses, how many people were putting their hands in his pocket. Yeah, it sounds it sounds fishy. That that sounds like there might have been some funny business yeah. going on there. Yeah, that his uncle's snow plowing for him. I think that's what <laughs> happened. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought so too. Yeah, it was crazy, right? Um, and then use your coach. Like I didn't do this enough early on, you know, with J the Jake and Gina, I joined this program. I spent all this money and I really didn't utilize it the way I should have initially. And, but I'll tell you what, through this deal, my coach, Nick, Nick Amaluxon was amazing. Like I really leaned on him. He talked me off a ledge a lot. He gave me perspective a lot. He gave me some good advice. We had regular calls. Hey, what, here's what's going on now. What do you think about this? Just bouncing stuff off him. You know, he, he was really, he's, he's done a lot of deals himself. He's, you know, managing a lot of deals himself. So it was really, really helpful. I so, think to, to really piggyback off of that con, you know, that comment you made, use your coach, you put a lot of work into it. You, you've come to a lot of the events. You showed up in Knoxville, the manager, right? So, I mean, even though you invest in a program, you've got to put a lot of hard work into it. I remember you reaching out to me. I was I was actually sending students over to you to be able to be KPs for you, to be able to raise money for you. So you, you, you put the hard work in. And when you do that, hard work usually ends up paying off because people want to help somebody who's putting the effort into it. That's why Nick's on the calls with you because he knows you're going to put the effort into it and he knows you're going to pull the thing through. So whatever program you join, the program has to be good, obviously, but you also have to have a commitment to the program and you have to have that commitment to the hard work. You said hustle, knowledge, and money. So you had the hustle and you had the knowledge. You ended up finding the money on this deal, which is phenomenal. Right. right. I didn't have a lot of the money myself. And, you know, like both my coaches, gave me referrals of people that may be interested in investing in a deal or were looking for a deal or were actually capital raisers. So mm -hmm. that, you know, helped me raise a small chunk of money in this deal that got us over the hump. So it, it, uh, it was very, very valuable to, to network and use, you know, the coaching, the, what we actually, you know, what you paid for, why would you pay for a program and not utilize all the resources you have? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. So the exit strategy is real simple for here. I mentioned it earlier, like, it's we're individually selling the condo. So it won't be like an exit strategy five years down the road. It'll be more like we're already renovating four of them and we're listing one next month, our first one. So over the years, it'll be like, you know, whatever, 10, 12 units a year that will be dissolving. And then that'll be become part of an association that's at this condo, you know, at this condo development. So, um, and for me, you know, my next steps is, I really didn't brand myself all that well. And I started working on it with the, the logo and the three nails capital and stuff like that. But, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really heavy on social media. I, when it came time to capital raise, I realized my bandwidth was very narrow because I hadn't really done the work that, it, that I needed to do getting, you know, myself out there and, and making sure that people knew that this is what I do, you know? So, That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. That's great. You have any contact information? Oh, yeah. Contact information here. If anybody wants to, you know, you can scope this. Anybody, anybody wants to um, connect with uh, Jason, throw up your contact information there, Jason. Yep. Yeah, there it is right there. His cell number is right there. That's his website. Email address right there. Uh, Jace, uh, Jake, do you have any questions? Any more questions for Jason on this deal? Yeah. What do, what do you think you're going to be uh, netting on each one as, as they come off? It depends on the size. We have some five bedroom, 2000 square foot condos that are right on the river. Wow. Those will go for like 350 and we paid 126 a door. So you're going to do okay. But, but there's some, also some two bedroom, smaller units that are interiors that just have egress. They don't have, they're not on the river. Those ones will go for like mm, probably 220. So at the very least we'll, we'll be netting after our expenses and holding costs and stuff like that, 40 to 50,000 at the very least. Per unit and then some of them may be as much as a couple hundred thousand net profits when we sell them that is awesome congratulations that is a great deal that is that is amazing george is asking if you're just starting out like my partner i besides starting to net starting to attend networking events in our area what else should we be doing to get our foot in the door I mean, George, what I would say is pick a market, get in that market, Google multifamily brokers and start connecting with every broker in your market. And once you start connecting to all the brokers, you're going to start getting deal flow. And I would also do what, what Jason did, try to make some connections in the community banking world, maybe the credit union world, start talking to property managers. Uh, Jake loves Mary Helen, a uh, title company, start looking and talking to title companies, CPAs, closing attorneys, do that whole network and multifamily, they all have deals. They all have people who do deals. So the more people you know, I, I think the, the more ability that you're going to have to hear what's going on in the market. I mean, we've done, we found, Jake, we found deals from everybody. We found deals from title companies, community banks, 
property management companies, real estate brokers, Jake and Gino community members. I mean, we found deals from everybody because yeah. as we've gotten bigger- We had a party at my house one night and some lady was there and she just sold us the fourplex. Like you just never know, <laughs> right? No, it's true. That's awesome. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, can I add something? Yes. Of course. You know, uh, like I've always believed in find a person, like for, for this is for the audience. Find somebody that's that's where you want to go, that has already done what you want to do, and try to try to surround yourself with that people. Try to follow them around, like just you know, I mean, you know, just catch some of the smell that they. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know how to say it any better. Like you yeah. guys, you guys, I heard you on a podcast, and I wanted to be around you guys because you were doing and you had the family values, and you like you had somebody, Gino, just recently on your podcast, Zach Happenstall. Well, Zach yeah. at the end of that podcast said. I'll talk to anybody about real estate. Just call me. I'll book a call with you. Guess what? I booked a call with Zach. I got, I had an amazing call with Zach. Like mm -hmm. I did this stuff. If someone says at the end of the podcast, Hey man, anybody can just reach out to me and call me. I'll, I'll jump on a call and talk real estate with them. Why in the world wouldn't you do that? Right. Just, you want to get that ooze and that whatever it is they got, you want to catch a piece of that. And I'll catch the whip, you, baby. I'm going to do the same exact thing. Anybody wants to email me, call me. I have never turned anybody away. I went and actually stayed. At, I should, probably shouldn't even be saying this, but one someone reached out to me in Michigan when I was on your podcast, and he's like, "Man, I got an apartment in my basement. Man, come on, you stay stay with me and my family." Didn't even know the guy. Went and stayed at his house with his family, and I with my family. We went to church the next morning. Absolutely amazing. We're talking about doing a ninety-seven unit deal together like that. that that's just how it works. Yes, I agree. You got to be willing to put yourself out there, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that, brother. <laughs> Jason, thank you very much for sharing. Everybody, there's his number, oh, yeah. 7454840914. I want you all to hit him up if you have any questions specifically on this deal. Uh, because what I want, you know, if you have any questions on how he found it, we, we talked a little bit about that. The manager right portion is really important. He can go into, into that as well. And I think his buy right criteria, I'd love for him to share with you on a, on a separate call if you'd like to find out what his buy right criteria is as well. Absolutely. I'd love to share all that. I could send him my OM and we can talk more about the deal, but uh, thanks for having me. You guys love you guys. Love your program. I looking forward to seeing you guys in Nashville. Yeah, baby. See you in August.